Okay. There's this popular phrase in modern times that is called WWJD. It stands for What Would Jesus Do? Now, usually people mean by that, uh, well, Jesus would not be mean. He certainly wouldn't rob a bank. Uh, he would be nice to people, uh, would not say bad words, and would not cheat on his income taxes. And so you, you know, you kind of put your place as you go along the daily routine in Jesus's place and say, well, if it was Jesus, what would he do? Okay. The problem is, is that this isn't quite taken far enough. If we're going to use Jesus as a model for our lives, and he provided a model for us and an example for us to follow, then you should ask the question, what would Jesus do if he came across a sick person? And of course the answer is natural. Well, he'd heal them. Well, of course. And so then the question becomes, well, you've got Jesus in you, right? Christ in you, the expectation of glory. So what, when you come across a sick person, does Jesus in you want to do? Well, heal the person. Okay, so the idea is, is well, why don't we do that? And there are various excuses, of course. Um, that's not my ministry. I don't have the anointing. Uh, I'm not gifted, um, not called, uh, not the time and place, busy with other things now. And so uh, the answer to this dilemma is very simple, actually. And it's in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Okay. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, it says, On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, What must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. And we know that the rest of that parable, of course, concludes with, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So we see the example there of what the priest and the Levite did. Clearly, what were they thinking? They passed by on the other side. This is not my ministry. This is not my calling might be a problem there, might be dangerous, uh, you know, one excuse after another. It doesn't say what's going through their minds. Of course, Jesus is just making up the story as an illustration. So the point is, is that the Samaritan is the one who had pity on the man. And Jesus says, go and do likewise. Now, can you do it? Well, we just concluded you've got Jesus in you, the expectation of glory. And in Mark chapter 16, verse 18, it says that believers will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. It says believers, not called people, not apostles, not Benny Hinn, not 
special anointed people, not whatever you want to say, but believers. So if you're a believer, then you can put your hands on a sick person and then we'll get well. The responsibility is yours because it all comes from love your neighbor as yourself. The golden rule, do to others as you would have them do to you. If you were that sick person and you were not a believer, but you know that there was a believer that was passing by who had Jesus, the expectation of glory in them, and by the power of the Holy Spirit could get them well, then what would you want them to do?